going to bath you? You're going to let Carrie bath you? Yeah. Oh. When I'm a dog, she's getting me ready for the trials on Saturday. I wouldn't want a girl bathing me. I think it's important I look my best. If you look the part, with a nice shiny coat and a clean bushy tail, then you feel better. And if you feel better, you perform better. Jim? Yeah? You're sure you do actually turn into a dog, are you? I mean, you'd have to be a pretty big fool to believe someone turns into a dog, wouldn't you? But you've seen it happen. I know, but... But what? I was thinking... No, Brian. It said on the radio about this Tibetan guy who keeps going out of his body and off on the astral plane. And he always leaves these llamas behind. I reckon that's what could be happening to you. Except we don't have llamas here, so you leave a dog. I reckon it's to sort of keep your place bagsied on Earth while you're away. What do you think? <laughs> don't you want to know? Doesn't it worry you? What worries me, Brian, is depending on somebody who still doesn't believe I turn into a dog. Oh, I do? <sighs> I always thought you forgot my clothes because you were forgetful. Not because you didn't believe. You're scratching. <sighs> Listen, I've written some instructions. Instructions? To tell you what to do when I change. Can you see anything? What? You know, bright lights, mysterious figures beckoning, anything like that. Brian, concentrate. Snow-capped mountains. Don't forget my clothes. Hey, what do I look like from up there? Pretty funny, I suppose. This is amazing. Are there lots of famous dead people? You might see Elvis or Darth Vader. Can you give me any message from the Great Yonder? In the event of me turning into a dog, quickly, one, clip my clothes, two, put them in your bag. So, you want me to collect your clothes and put them in my bag quickly? There's nothing more like getting you a bowl of pure spring water or anything, is there? Come on, Brian. We haven't got all night. This is amazing. How did you write that? Move or I'll bite your leg. The dog wrote it. Mm. Wow! <laughs> you weren't going to be here. Well, I am. Right. I was wondering if I could have a quick word with Carrie. I'm sorry, Carrie's not here. Now, would you please take your dog out? Sure. Just to say I've taken him out, Mrs Howard. Good. Brian. Brian Barford. I'm a friend of Carrie's. She may have mentioned me. Oh, yes, I think she has. Oh, are you ready to order? You see, we got a message to meet her at the Copper Kettle. I told you, she's not here. There she is. Be that. She must have come in some other way without you noticing. Uh, yes. Just when we wanted to talk to her. You know what, Mrs Howard? That's what I call a miracle. The chances in that happening must be, oh, I don't know. Let's go, Brian. Well, where are you going, darling? Home. Oh, I see. Uh, and what about... Brian, I'm going to. So you're not um, planning to study? Oh, yes. Well, don't let him distract you, darling. I wouldn't dream of it, Mrs Howard. I'll just sit in the corner, quiet as a mouse, hardly daring to breathe. She won't even know I'm there. I'm helping him with his history project. It's only one short thing. Well, I do hope so. Just make sure you leave plenty of time for your own work, won't you? You can leave that to me, Mrs Howard. If she so much as looks up from her books, I'll remind you of your very words and... Out, Brian. You're in charge, Emily. I have to check something. 
Whatever it is you needed to tell him? Not quite, ma'am. Well, don't be too long, then. Right, ma'am. Oh, no, you don't. I don't want dirty feet and fleas in here. Thank you! A clever dog. Brian was just saying that you're really Jim on the astral plane. <laughs> right, bath time. It shouldn't take too long. You just need to fill it from the bathroom. <coughs> I've explained his history to him. So that's 1066. I'll try and remember that. Thanks, Carrie. Oh, what's that? It's my tennis racket. It keeps falling over. Oh. Really? That's another thing I have to do, tidy my room. Mm. Come on, Brian. Hi, Carrie. No, no. No, darling, it's a little boy in a girl's dressing gown. Jim? Oh, I thought it was you. Um, everything all right at school, is it? You saw me there earlier, Dad. I did, didn't I? Good. No problems or anything? No, Dad. Nothing you want to talk through? Not too tired or anything? No. Well, I'm quite tired, actually. You were out with Brian, were you? Yes, but I'm not now. We were playing quite hard. A lot of running about and stuff, and I'm really whacked. Well, if you want another chat or anything... Yes, Dad, I oh, will. Good. Oh, I'm glad we sorted that out. I think. Was she furious? I suppose she wanted to know what you had done with the dog and why you are wearing her dressing gown. I can imagine. What were you doing? What? What were you doing with the dressing gown? Wearing it, of course. Didn't you have your own? No. Oh. I've got a really great one. Tartan with haggis on the pocket. From an aunt in Japan. What are you going to say to her? Carrie, not my aunt in Japan. I suppose I'm going to have to tell her the truth. Oh. I've brought back your dressing gown. Are you sure you don't need it? 
Can I speak to you? You just have. Please, Carrie. I have to talk to you. It's about the dog. Where is he? Can I come in, please? Not until you tell me where you've put the dog. I didn't take him, but I know what happened. What happened? I can't tell you here. OK, but it better be good. You've had two days and that's the best you can come up with? I'm afraid so. The dog was actually you and you were only turning back into yourself again? Yeah. What sort of idiot do you think I am? But it's true. And all the other times the dog's been around, that was you too, I suppose. It's pathetic. Have you ever wondered why I'm never around at the same time as the dog? I'm never around at the same time as Laura Hooper's goldfish. It doesn't mean I spent half my life swimming around in a little glass bowl. I'm sorry, not very convincing. Don't tell me you're going to change now. I am, because I don't believe you. Well, if you think you can scare me by... She never liked me as a boy, but she won't even let me get near her as a dog now. She threw me out of the house. Is all this going to make it a bit difficult at the sheepdog trials tomorrow? Are you kidding? What have you said to Carrie? Well, how do you mean, miss? I just took her her team sweatshirt for the trials and she said that she wasn't coming. Oh, no. She said she not only wasn't entering, but if she ever saw you, a sheep, or the dog again, she'd wrap the sweatshirt round their neck and stick their head through the railings. Now, what did she mean, do you think? I reckon she's pretty fed up with Jim and the dog and sheep, miss. For the first time in my life, I find myself agreeing with you, Brian. What's it all about, Jim? Like I said... Jim? Well, we had a bit of... The thing is, it, it's difficult. Well, not that difficult. Look, whatever you've said or done... I haven't done anything, miss. Well, whatever it was, say you're sorry. Pay the ransom, rub out the rude drawing, do whatever is necessary. Yes, miss. I want her at the next competition. Yes, miss. More important, I want the National Junior Championship Trophy in that cabinet in three weeks' time. I'll talk to her. Good. So we've got to be really nice to her. Yeah. I'll tell you what might swing it, if you offered to return the dog. What? You know, the one in the wardrobe. Brian, I didn't take the dog. So where did it go then? Dogs don't just walk, Jim. Carrie! Mrs Jessup says you're not doing any more competitions. No. We can still enter, you know. Why didn't you tell me? What? Why didn't you say you turned into a dog? I tried. You wouldn't believe me. Of course I didn't believe you. Boys don't turn into dogs. I don't see how it makes any difference. Except every time I think we've done well, I know it's only because you're really a boy. It's like cheating. It is not. It's really difficult. Just think of all the commands I have to learn. I tell you, it'd be a lot easier if I was a dog. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not having anything more to do with it. What are you going to do now? I don't know, but I better start doing it pretty quickly. Ah, I haven't had anyone asking for any registration forms yet. No, miss. I take it the situation is still the same. We're trying our best, miss. She won't budge, miss. I even offered to do her homework. I don't think you've got the picture. We're not just talking getting into good books here. I'm looking for some serious grovelling. Yes, miss. And get a move on. There's only a few days left. OK, this calls for plan B. What's plan B? Total humiliation. Is, is he all right? He's fine. Just a little cut on his finger. Nothing to worry about. Before about showing off when you're cutting the sandwiches. Where to? Oh, the hospital, please. Move up. Oh. 
No. You can't get round me. I just feel such a fool. <coughs> well, I do. And when I think of all the things I told you. Secret things, because I thought you were a dumb animal. <coughs> I did. I told you about not getting into the netball team. I cried my eyes out. I thought I could trust you. Now you'll tell everybody. <coughs> you say that now, but... He won't, I'm sure. I know what it's like. He'll forget or he'll be in a bad mood or something. And it'll be all around the playground. You should have warned me. Not fair. I thought you were a proper dog. Oh, I think he is, dear. I appreciate what you're trying to do. It's nice of you to bring me flowers. But I'm not taking a sheepdog driving. I'm sorry. Give her a moment. She's just a bit upset. answer that. But what if he asks for something I can't cook? <coughs> he might. I mean, we're talking most things on the menu. That's why we have a chef. You see, you've no answer. I'm right, aren't I? <coughs> I'm sorry. I'll just go in and take his order. Do I look all right? <coughs> what am I worrying about? Probably only wants to test the scones anyway. He wants a short mixed grill. Just a short mixed grill, he says. Just? I don't even know what's in it. I don't even know where to find it. Mum's going to kill me. He's going to come in here and say, anyone like to come and play in the park? No. It's just that they've got this really wet concrete and... Never mind. Brian, the man from the Tasty Tea Rooms guide's out there. And he asked for a short mixed grill. Ah, a tasty platter of tender lamb chop, prime pork sausages and two succulent strips of bacon, served with the chef's grilled tomato and a farm fresh free range egg. What did you say? I said, ah, a tasty platter of, you know it? Know it? I've had it after band practice every week for the last three years. So you could cook it? Ah, uh, no. That's why we come to the tea rooms. It's a pity Jim isn't here. He's the real cook. You should try his fudge brownies. What? I said, it's a pity Jim isn't here. <coughs> For the chop. <coughs> chop. Chop. Like this. <coughs> How long for? <coughs> Five minutes. <coughs> we might just be in with a chance. <coughs> Let's go for it. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is brilliant. <laughs> You're a star. Let's see what he makes of it. <gasps> oh, why don't you take the rest of the afternoon off? So, I've been swatting up on the whistle blast again. Mrs. Jessup seems to be back on form. She claims that there's nothing actually in the rules against cheerleaders. Listen, I'm sorry about mum and dogs. It's okay. How did it go? She loved it. We've gone up an extra category in the guide. That's great. We're going to be a three sugar lump tea room. Brilliant. He had only one criticism. He thought we should have a word with the people next door found their dog rather annoying, barking all the time. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. For well, nothing. It's a bit more than nothing. I enjoyed it. Never had the chance to be a chef before. Sorry for being so grotty before. It's OK. Must have all been a bit weird. I don't think we've a sparrow's chance in a combine of being allowed to perform, but it's wonderful for morale. I've got a whole coachload coming on Saturday to watch on the strength of it. So, you're friends again, are you? Yes, miss. All set for the big day? Yes, miss. You're coming as well, Jim. That's nice. I think I'd better. That's what I like to hear. And the dog? I've had him revising all the different whistles. <laughs> you make him sound like a boy getting ready for exams. Well, it's a bit like that, miss. I'd imagine. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to go. This poor Melanie, she's terribly dyslexic. Melanie, what do you think you're doing? Anyway, thanks. Uh-oh. Jim? Yes? Scratching, it's a sign, isn't it? I'm afraid so. It's just, I'm not sure I can handle it. You don't have to look. It's OK, I'm getting quite good at it. You are, aren't you? 